Let's dive into the journey of dengue fever, starting from day zero and moving through the different phases of the illness. The adventure begins when an 80s mosquito carrying the dengue virus takes a bite. The virus immediately starts making its way through your body, targeting your immune cells. This invasion sets off a chain reaction where the virus replicates and your immune system kicks into high gear, trying to fight off the infection. By the time you hit day one to three, you're in the febrile phase. This is when dengue fever really starts to show its colors. The fever kicks in suddenly and can be quite high. Along with the fever, you might experience severe headaches, pain behind your eyes, and muscle and joint pain so intense it feels like your bones are breaking, hence the nickname breakbone fever. You may also notice a rash that usually appears around days three to four. It can range from a faint, blotchy appearance to a more diffuse rash. Other signs might include mild bleeding symptoms such as nosebleeds or gum bleeding. During this phase, the dengue virus is actively replicating within your body, causing widespread immune activation. One of the key issues here is hemoconcentration, where plasma leaks out of the blood vessels into surrounding tissues, leading to a higher concentration of blood cells and proteins. That's why we see higher levels of hemoglobin in a complete blood count, and WBC levels are usually decreased due to the virus's impact on the bone marrow and immune cells. To confirm dengue, doctors use blood tests. The dengue NS1 antigen is detectable early in the illness, while dengue IgM IgG antibodies indicate whether the infection is recent or ongoing. A dengue PCR test can detect the virus itself and confirm the diagnosis. Focus on supportive care. Hydration is crucial. Drink plenty of fluids to help manage the fever and prevent dehydration. Paracetamol can be used to relieve pain and fever, but avoid NSAIDs like ibuprofen as they can increase bleeding risks. Rest up and keep an eye on your symptoms as this phase is just the beginning of your dengue journey. Now, let's dive into the critical phase of dengue fever where things can get a bit intense. Day four to seven, the critical phase. By the time you hit days four to seven, you're entering the critical phase. This is when dengue fever can take a serious turn. After a few days of high fever, you might notice your temperature drops suddenly. Don't be fooled. This can be a deceptive calm before the storm. During this period, symptoms can intensify and new complications can arise. In addition to the usual suspects, fever, headache, and muscle pain, watch out for severe abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, rapid breathing, bleeding gums, restlessness, and signs of shock like cold, clammy skin, and a rapid weak pulse. You might also see petechiae, small red or purple spots on the skin, and more significant bleeding. Here's what's happening inside your body. The dengue virus causes your blood vessels to become leaky, leading to plasma leakage. This results in hemoconcentration, where the liquid part of your blood leaks into tissues, causing a higher concentration of red blood cells and other components. Your blood becomes thicker, and this can lead to complications like dengue hemorrhagic fever, DHF, or dengue shock syndrome, DSS. Relative bradycardia, where your heart rate doesn't increase as expected despite high fever, is another clinical feature. Additionally, rashes can change or intensify during this phase, with some patients developing more prominent rashes or even bruising. Monitoring blood tests is crucial. You'll often see a decrease in platelet count, thrombocytopenia, and an increase in hematocrit levels due to plasma leakage. Checking for other signs, like liver function tests and electrolyte levels, helps in managing complications. Dengue PCR and dengue IgM IgG tests remain essential for confirming the diagnosis and monitoring the virus's presence. This phase often requires hospitalization. Treatment focuses on managing symptoms and preventing complications. Intravenous fluids help address plasma leakage and maintain blood pressure. Continuous monitoring is crucial to manage any severe symptoms promptly. Blood transfusions might be necessary in cases of severe bleeding or extremely low platelet counts. We've navigated the febrile and critical phases, and now we're heading into the recovery phase. As you move into days 8 to 14, you'll start to enter the recovery phase. This is when the body begins to heal and return to normal, but there are still some important things to watch for. You should start to see an improvement in symptoms. The fever subsides, and the rashes might change or start to fade. You might experience some unusual symptoms like hiccups, which can be an odd sign of recovery. Additionally, you might see signs of skin peeling, particularly on the palms and soles. During this phase, expect an increase in your platelet count and a general improvement in how you feel. After the recovery phase, you should feel significantly better. 
Symptoms should continue to improve and like, and you'll gradually return to normal health. As you move beyond the two week mark, most of your symptoms should have resolved. You'll feel more energetic and your appetite will return. The rash will have faded completely and any signs of bleeding will have disappeared. Your platelet counts and hematocrit levels should be back to normal. It's important to follow any post-recovery advice from your healthcare provider to ensure no long-term complications. Dengue fever starts with viral infection and immune response, progresses through critical plasma leakage and possible complications, and ends with fluid rebalancing and recovery. See you in the next video.